So, you know, you, you arrived a little late, and usually we give out drink tickets that are good for two paps. So okay. I, I thought I'd... You know, I'll take them both right now. <laughs> they can bring so them you, up. You don't have that down in the wine cellar. We have everything. <laughs> we have everything imaginable. There's no such thing as the word no. That's Charlie true. Trotter, so. I, I heard that if somebody said, you know, or w way back somebody said, you know, I want chicken, and you didn't, you didn't have chicken, and you would go out to another restaurant and get the chicken. We would, uh, first we persuade, or attempt to persuade uh, the guests to possibly go for poussin, okay. or baby pheasant, organic pheasant, and assuring them that that's kind of like chicken. And if they still say, no, I really want to have chicken, we say, no problem. And, we send someone down the alleyway to, uh, they don't know that we don't have chicken actually in the restaurant. We always say yes and send them down the alleyway to the Cafe Babariba. We, <laughs> we borrow a chicken, we bring it back, we rub it with olive oil and coarse sea salt and carefully remove skin and put slices of truffles under the skin and then truss it, truss it back up and brown it and slowly roast it and baste it and, and then we bring it up and cut it up for them and you know, it, it's gonna, it, it costs like $125 but... <laughs> But, but chicken it is, so. What if they ask for nuggets? That can be done too, but that, that's even more expensive. So, <laughs> so I, I wanted to start with, when we, when we sat down, I, I asked some very simplistic question to our, our server, who, who was absolutely fantastic, and I said something like, you know, what's the, what's the seasonal foods now? And she said, and I thought this was very interesting, that, that you don't think in four seasons, that you think in... 52 seasons, or, or even more seasons. Well, that's true, and I've, I've, I've always thought that, you know, the easy way to look at is the, the four distinct seasons, and, but really, the things come in and out of season weekly, so there are literally 52 mini-seasons that, that make up the, the calendar. I mean, something might last for four weeks or, or, or two months, but here come the fava beans, and here comes the rhubarb, and here come the shad with the shad row, and here comes organic peas, and here, here come pears and peaches, and on and on. So it just keeps going around the calendar. So it's, it's more of a microcosm of how the, the thing might work. What is, like right now, what are, you, what, what are you excited about this week? Well, this is a great time of, of year to eat because you've got sort of the end of what uh, represents spring. So rabbit is incredible, and and sweet peas, and the end of rhubarb, and uh, the end of tiny little bay scallops, uh, but it's the beginning of peaches. This time of the year, peaches are, are not quite as succulent, but they've got a, this different kind of acidic element to them, and then the beginning of, uh, of the berry season, so we're seeing the first strawberries, so it's, it's sort of a, a transitional kind of uh, week here, with a lot of herbs and different things like that, so. I wanted to, I guess, go, go back to to the beginning, and, and, I, and I found a, a funny, or I thought it was kind of funny, quote uh, from a Chicago Tribune writer when you opened in, in 87, and he wrote that Trotter's quote marks the long-awaited return of civility to the Chicago dining scene. And I, di I didn't live here then, and I was, I was at Houlihan's at the time, but <laughs> what, what, I mean, what, what is you he- know, I remember you from that. <laughs> But what does he mean by civility? I mean, there weren't food fights at restaurants at the time. You know, I didn't write that, and I've done my best to not necessarily create civility. Um, I'm not sure what that meant, but uh, we, we tried to do something that was refined, but not in the, in the French genre of things. We wanted to do something that was a little bit more... Uh, borrowing from Asia and, and distinctly American, and uh, but still with a, an element of of refinement. So maybe maybe that's what they meant. Um, but you know, a couple of years after that, I was voted the second meanest person in the city of Chicago. I know. I was. So, you when I read that, I said I got to cancel this interview. So I'm not sure about what the civility thing means. Who was number number one? Was well, was, uh, was Michael Jordan? And I who's I, no longer here. So that yeah, so by it default. seems like I, I would be number one. So. Um, now you didn't. You you were 28 when the restaurant opened, but it wasn't like you just said, "I'm going to open up a restaurant." You you had gone through a pretty lengthy, I don't know if you want to call it apprenticeship, but but and I was reading that your first experience or one of your first experiences, you went to Madison. You didn't come from a food family. You were a poli sci major. I'm just going to list a bunch of facts about you for the next 10 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> A roommate of yours was, was very into food, and, and that kind of got you into it. And then you got a job as a waiter at a restaurant. And is this true? You had to dress up like a monk? 
That is true, but, um, <laughs> but it gets better than that. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna back you up further because I had a job when I was 16 at a place in Wilmette at, at the Plaza de Lago, if you're familiar with that. And this will date you. If you n remember this place, uh, not this specific outlet, but the whole chain of these places, then you, you know you're, you're old, but it, it was called the Ground Round. I love the Ground Round. And, uh, <laughs> So I'm, I'm 16 years old, I get a job there as a busboy, and had with no intention of ever, you know, like not thinking I'm gonna get into this line of work or anything like that. And, and part of their shtick was, we'll start these people off with peanuts, and then we, in, in, we encourage you to throw the shells on the floor, it, it creates a nice ambiance, and we like that, it's casual. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of disgusting, so I was always trying to sweep up the peanuts, and the manager would come over and say, no, 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 leave those there, we want them there. And, <laughs> uh, you know, then I'd go in the kitchen, and. And I didn't really know what a chef was then, what, or what constituted a chef. I thought if you're leading the kitchen, I guess you're the chef. But I realize now that the two guys that were running this kitchen were definitely not chefs, but they just had the worst mood. I mean, they were in the worst mood, the, the foulest attitude, I should say. But they're cooking, two guys making dinner for like 400 people, you know, which tells you a lot right there. And they're grilling everything, and they're swearing, and they're not happy. And, and the poor lady comes back from the dining room, the wait person saying, well, you know, the customer thinks that the lamb is too rare and they're, oh, that's not, you know, t tell her to order something else. Or, and I'm watching these guys going, this isn't very hard to, to have a good attitude about service. I mean, these people are working really hard and you can, you can make this right uh, easily. And um, so even back then I realized that this, uh, this is an interesting game of chess that you play with the clients and the, and the service team, the culinary team, the whole thing. I'm going to fast forward just a couple of years, and in college I, I took a semester off, and before I worked at the monastery in Madison, Wisconsin, <laughs> dressed like a monk with a rope belt and a long robe with a hood, um, I, I, better, I, I cannot do that. I worked uh, at a place called James Tavern up in, the, in Northbrook Court, and it was, uh, we dressed like we were right off the Mayflower with uh, <laughs> poofy pants and, and buckle shoes and these things, and uh, so I, for a while I worked in these kind of theme type uh, <laughs> operations. So maybe that's the return to civility. But I gotta tell you that, the, the, <laughs> maybe. I gotta, I gotta tell you my main philosophy uh, is, is, I've learned after all these years is uh, if it weren't for the customers and if it weren't for the employees, the restaurant business would be easily the greatest business in the world. <laughs> Do you, I mean, when you see customers in the restaurant, do you immediately size them up? What, why is this person here? Is he here to impress that other person? Is he here for a, an anniversary? Well, I gotta be honest, we, we actually don't use the C word. We don't use the, the customer word. We use the, uh, the word guest or, 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 or patron. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't use the employee word either. We use the, the word team member or family member. But no, you, you can size people up. You can figure out what what's going on with, well, at a place like Trotter's, uh, we have a lot of people celebrating very special occasions. It could be the big birthday or the big anniversary, or it could be a, a business dinner, or, or you get the ultra foodie type. They fly in just for dinner and they're leaving the next day, or you get the wine type that, you know, they want to study the wine list for 20 minutes. This is one of the reasons we put the whole wine list on, on, online about five years ago, because we, we could save a lot of time from that standpoint. <laughs> but no, but you're figuring out what, the guest needs before they even have a chance to ask for it. And it's a combination of, you know, the old adage that the, 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 the customer is always right. Um, <laughs> no, nothing could be further from the truth. The customer is rarely right. And that is why you must seize control of the circumstances <laughs> and dominate every last detail to guarantee that they're going to have a far better time than they ever would have had had they tried to control it themselves. But th the art of that is making sure that they think they're in control. Mm -hmm.